Hey guys, it's Vinny with McPherson Firearms here, uh, bringing you a uh, Tech Tuesday event. And today we're going to go over how to pin and weld a 14.5 inch or shorter barrel uh, to make it legally 16 inches in length. Um, as you guys know, for it to be considered a, uh, a rifle length, um, or classified as a rifle uh, by the ATF, uh, it has to be 16 inches in overall length. Uh, this here is a 14.5 inch um, heavy barrel that we are going to pin and weld um, to an overall length of 16.25 inches. Um, with the crush washer and a Yankee Hill machine um, muzzle device, we kind of came over just over, uh, which is fine. Um, we just want to make sure that this is legal and can be configured as a rifle. Uh, we've already indexed the muzzle device, as you can see, the flats are on the bottom, um, you know, as most of us know. The A2 style birdcage uh, originally invented this uh, so you don't have um, splash coming up for shooting prone um, on your on your standard uh, AR-15 or M16. Um, and so anyway, we've already indexed the, the muzzle device, so we're going to go ahead and set it up in the uh, in the mill over here, and uh, I'll let you guys tag along and show you the process. So what I like to do is obviously I start with it upside down and uh, get it roughly where I want it on the mill, kind of centered over my uh, over my chuck. And so we put it in, we get a rough level. Uh, I like to take a level off the upper receiver um, because that's the truest flat on here. Uh, I don't suggest you go off the gas block because it could be slightly canted. Um, and the receiver we know is going to be uh, as accurate as we need it to be. So I'm just using a standard uh, vise on my mill here. I got it to a rough level over here, so it's good enough for me. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use what we call a reaction rod. Um, and what this does is this basically slides into the bore of the... Uh, of the of the barrel and um, this kind of gives us our baseline to keep us from drilling through into the barrel so i slide this into here right into the muzzle it tightens up they're actually made um, to to tighten into the bore um, so it's it's nice and tight we know it's truly centered this is truly meant for this we're not using a cleaning rod this is not something that you know we made out of you know toothpicks and bubble gum this is something that we purchased and it is for this very reason um, this is its use. So uh, I already have chucked up a three millimeter um, high speed drill bit here and basically you want to make sure that this drill bit is nice and tight because if it walks you're going to probably drill through the barrel um, because normally when you're drilling they walk up and not down so um, what will happen is it will change the numbers on your DRO uh, which you can see we have a digital DRO over here and if it changes those numbers uh, you might miscalculate and end up punching a hole right through the barrel. Um, if you do that you're going to have to lop that part off, recrown it. It's going to require a lathe and quite a bit of work on your end. So I highly suggest um, let us do it. Or if you're going to tackle this on your own, make sure that you have some sort of device that you can um, either digitally or analog measure uh, the depth of, of your drill. So what we're going to do now is we're just, we're just going to zero everything out. We're going to start from, start from scratch here. Um, I know everything is already centered. Um, so I'm not going to go through the arduous process of centering my drill bit. Uh, but what I am going to do is I'm going to bring my drill bit down to the center of this, or I'm sorry, to the edge of this reaction rod. And what that's going to do is that's going to give me my base zero. Uh, so I go down right until it touches, right until I see it move, and then I back off until it, until it, um, until it straightens out. So we're right about there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my z-axis, and I'm going to zero set it. What that does is that, that lets me know that I don't want to go any further than there. And so I'm going to back off about 20 thousandths. Okay, if I can get it there. All right, well, about, eh, we're, okay, we're right about there. Point, point zero 0.0205, that's, that's about perfect. I don't want to go any further than that. So I'm going to zero this out again. And now everything is, is at zero. So uh, now I have my depth set. So bring, bring the, uh, the drill bit back down on your x-axis, which if you don't have a power x, it kind of takes a second. Uh, you get it centered right over where you're about to, uh, to drop the pin in, where you want to drop the pin in. Take a little bit of cutting oil, a little cutting oil on there, run your drill up. Now this is a 2500 RPM drill. Uh, mill drill. Um, I'm not going to run anywhere near that. I'm probably running about maybe a quarter uh, speed. So I'd say eh, I'm in the realm of, of about 650 RPM. I don't have a I don't have a uh, attack on this thing, so I don't really know. But 
I'm using my fine movement uh, just because I want to really keep an eye on that Z dial. I want to make sure that I'm not going down, you know, too far too fast. Um, you feed nice and slow. As you can see, this is a new bit, so it's cutting very well. Um, you know, you're gonna you're gonna get a lot of a lot of drops coming out. So just you know, give it a little bit of compressed air here and there. Uh, really, with these Yankee Hills, uh, they're relatively mild steel, so we don't need to go back and re-oil. Uh, oiling once is fine, but I do like to come back up and clear the chips out um, Just so that way, you know, you're getting an accurate reading on the way down um, The last thing you want to do especially on a customer's gun is punch a hole through the barrel um, Because you know then you're liable for that barrel either fixing it or replacing it um, And trust me, I have drilled through a Noveski barrel before so I know the pain of that um, Luckily, I was able to repair it, but uh, and it was a, it was a shop barrel. So uh, you know, I didn't know a customer, but you know Doing this for a number of years, sometimes your equipment fails or sometimes you fail. And in, in that case, you know, I was too lazy and did not set my depth and paid for it. So um, just, you know, keep, keep in mind that this is, you know, this is a little bit of a process to do all of this. And so uh, here we are. We're, we're nearing the bottom here. We're almost at our zero. And you can see, like, I get kind of close. And then I'll back it off. I'll clear the chips out. And I'll get, get right down to that zero. And what I like to do is I'll bring it right down to my zero point, okay? And when I get there, right about there, bring it down, bring the mill back up, clear out all the chips, clean off a bit in the hole, get it really nice and clean, bring it down, reset it again, and just dive right back down to that zero point one more time. You just want to make sure that you're kissing that surface really good. Because um, you got to remember, when you're using a drill bit, it does have an angle on it, so it's not going to be a completely square cut at the bottom. Um, you can run it, run over it with an end mill uh, to kind of square it off. Uh, I've done that in the past. If I've had like a, a, a shallow barrel, if it's a really thin barrel, like a pencil barrel, uh, or something that's really lightweight, you're going to want to go in there and get after it with with an end mill. But whereas this is a, this is a heavy barrel, um, you know, it's a full profile. We really don't need to go in there and you know try and. Uh, try and go nuts and flatten it out and make it really tight. I mean, our goal here is quite literally just to put a pin in it. So if you, you can't really see my reaction rod, but there is zero marks on this and that's for good reason, guys. I don't drill through my, my good equipment. I mean, this is probably about 80 bucks uh, if I remember correctly. So now we're, we're good to go. We have our hole set. Um, we've used our equipment. Our equipment has told us exactly where we need it to be. We did not drill through the barrel. So now we need to get a pin in there um, and then put a tack on it. So. I have pre-made pins um, from McMaster. Um, these things are awesome. They're three millimeter um, stainless steel pins and they come in a pack. You don't gotta cut them. They're great, they drop right in. What I found out with this specific configuration, because this bear is a little bit bigger diameter than what I usually do, um, the, these are a little bit too small. So I have a longer pin and I'm just gonna cut that down. Um, so rather than spare you guys the process of that, I'm just gonna uh, pause for one quick second. Okay guys, I'm back. Um, you see here, I got just a little pin. I'm just holding it with pliers because it's a little bit hot. Um, so I've cut it down. Uh, basically, I don't remember the length of this. It might have been four mil. Um, I cut it down um, just, just a little bit off of it just so we're going to get a little bit of protrusion. So I'm going to pull this out of the fixture in just one second. I'm just going to drop this in there. And give it a little bit of a tap. Now you'll see. Let's see how well we can see this on screen here. You see you got slight bit of protrusion. That's almost perfect right there. Okay, see that? The camera's trying to focus, but um, but anyway, you get the put you get the picture. So it should be coming up just a little tiny bit. That's gonna give you enough material to, to bounce your, your arc off and your TIG welder without having to use any filler. Because let's be realistic, you know, if, if you're really low, um, you're gonna have to put some filler in there. And I don't know if any, any of you out there are TIG welders, but when you add filler, especially in a, in a small area where you just need to zap a dot, um, it can get a little messy and you're gonna have to do some cleanup afterwards. So we're trying to avoid that. We just wanna do a one hit um, and, and get this thing rocking. So I'm gonna move over to the, to the TIG setup. I'm gonna get this set up and move you guys over. So just hang with me one second. All right, guys, I got you moved over to the TIG welding station. Um, we have a, um, a Miller, I'm sorry, a Lincoln um, TIG 200 square wave TIG machine. Um, I have a relatively uh, newer tip, it's nice and clean. We got our shielding gas going. Um, the machine's set up for exactly how we want it. I'm not gonna get into machine setup just because your machine's gonna be different than mine. Um, what I'd like to do is a quick test uh, where I just do a quick zap on a uh, piece of plate steel, make sure that uh, the settings are good, and then I'll hit the, hit the uh, go ahead and hit the barrel, so. 
Okay, so everything looks good. The arc looks good. We're going to go over here and hit the barrel. as quick as it takes to hit that barrel as you can see it's a nice decent uh, weld and we're just going to clean that up with a little bit of bluing and oil and this is ready to go we can send this out so thanks for hanging in there and uh, we'll talk to you guys again soon